You know what I also love? I love trains. <laughs> Welcome to Spear Forest! Hello! Today we are at the Como Depot, which is a train station. Today is, uh, I think it's 85 years since they've had a train here. Yeah. And uh, we're really excited to see this event and, and want to share it with you guys. And it's a steam train. It is a steam train. <laughs> what do you think, Kyla? I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's really loud. So when we arrived to the event, we couldn't find a train anywhere. <laughs> it found out the train's on the other side. So we walked over there and we saw all these people looking underneath the train and we're like, what are they doing? What's going on? The train was supposed to run at the top of every hour and you'll be able to see it go back and forth and it's only about three city blocks. So I walked up close to the train and I saw what the problem was. The train fell off the tracks. So uh, watching these guys, which I think are mostly volunteers working on this train. Now again, it's been between 80 to 85 years since this train has been in this area. You know, these guys probably don't work on a train every day. And so they're trying to figure out how to get the train back on the tracks. So the girls and I, we sit around, we wait patiently uh, for them to, or impatiently, <laughs> for them to, to, uh, fix the train you know we're trying to figure out you know what's going on and uh, just just watching everybody kind of get together everybody's heads getting together trying to figure it out of what to do so they did end up figuring out how to get the train back on the tracks and what they did is that they backed up the train which was really cool of course I walked away for that little split of a second uh, to go get something to eat and of course then they back up the train and it gets back on the rails I invite you to join me and my girls as we tour this little town of Como, Colorado. 
Como's history is tied to the railroads and the mines. In 1859, the discovery of gold brought the first rush of miners. They were followed by ranchers. In 1872, they formed the Denver South Park Pacific Railway and to reach the mining districts in South Park and beyond. And when I say beyond, I mean they were expecting this to go all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Steam trains run on coal. In this case, we're using only wood. But back then, the steam trains were using coal. The first record of coal in the area go back to the 1860s. This area was the first coal source reached after leaving Denver, which established the area's importance. This is the reason why Coma was so popular back then. In 1879, the railroad bought ownership of the coal mines. Then tracks were laid through South Park and Coma was established. Como's site is 88 miles from Denver at the north end of South Park and the foot of Boris Pass. It was the perfect location for a major railroad stop and service engines. In 1881, the Denver South Park Pacific Railway built the roundhouse and started construction on a branch over Boris Pass to Leadville. I've been watching these guys on Facebook and this roundhouse is a huge part of history. It is the only remaining narrow gauge roundhouse in Colorado. So I've been reading a lot of history books on this area because I've been really interested in it. Um, there's a lot of Italian miners that came to this area to mine and they were the ones that actually named this city and they named it after Lake Como in Italy. In 1910, Como had a population of 475. In 2017, today, we have a population there of 18. The roundhouse, the depot, and the hotel were active 24 hours a day and it took many, many workers to keep the trains and the town running. Residents and workers came from all over, America, Europe, and China. Como's heyday was short-lived. The railroad and the town declined after Highway 285 came through South Park. The last passenger train was April 1937. Then in September 1938, an engine number 71 passed through on its way to Denver, pulling up tracks behind it. Today, only the traces of tracks beds are visible around Como. And just so you know, too, that on their Facebook page, they were asking for volunteers to come out here and lay some tracks. Now, what you're seeing is probably they laid about, I would say, three city blocks of tracks here. And it was all done by volunteers. And it's just amazing to, to watch this. Um, it goes from the roundhouse all the way to the depot and back. And, and watching these guys... Um, quote unquote play um, with a steam train it was just fun to watch and they weren't able to offer any rides this time um, due to insurance reasons. <laughs> Thank you.
bucks to get up here. Yeah, you gotta pay me. <laughs> Kyla, go get candy. She went to go get the candy. <laughs> this has been a fun experience, don't you think? Yeah. I love it. Look at, there's the train. Train. And Todd. <laughs> and me. And Madison. Kyla. These pioneer railroads took goods and supplies, tourists, and new residents into small towns and brought back Denver passengers, materials, and other raw materials. Colorado's population boomed with the railroads, reaching 413,149 by 1890. In a single generation, railroads helped transform a remote frontier territory into a state noted for industry and railroad tourism, as well as its silver and gold. Rollers come up and they take the ink off the roller and just ink that. They go up and get fresh ink and they printed that one and then I put another one in and I print, print the next one. And then I put another one in and print the next one. And that's got our website on it, but if I left some space here. There's a bunch of pictures over here, and Mark has a different press over there, and you can print one that you like on there if you if you can talk him into doing it. You want to pull it? Yes. Two hands on it. Hold towards you. Go. That's it. There you are. Now. If you want to learn how to do this, I got, I got you want to pull this? Yeah. Go ahead. Do it. That's it. Yeah. Looks good. How do you so, like see, it? you want to learn how to do this? <laughs> yeah, we have to teach the whole thing. Yeah. Well, What you see here is the South Park Hotel. The present hotel is a third to sit on this site. The railroad built the original Gilman Hotel in 1880 and was enlarged to be the Pacific Hotel that had many as 43 bedrooms and can seat 100 in the dining room. In 1896, the Pacific Hotel burnt down, but the part of the foundations and bricks were salvaged to build the current hotel. The railroad rented out the rooms to train operators until the last train in 1937. Afterward, the hotel was privately owned. What you see here is the Montag Saloon in 1880s or the Diamond Bar in 1930s. This building was known locally by those two names. In the 1930s, the building was altered with a diamond roof for the planned diamond bar. This was a rowdy drinking establishment for the railroad workers. I have read a lot of stories in the history books about this bar. This is the Como grade school. This is the school my kids would be going to. It was in 1883. The grade school was a hub of education and community life. It closed in 1948 and is now a community center that I can bring my kids to to play bingo and they have potlucks and oh, that's a lot of fun over there. This is the Como High School. The building was originally abandoned by Presbyterian Church but moved to the site in 1930. Its last class graduated in 1940 and then was literally shut down and not opened again until 1990s, creating a time capsule illustrating school life in the 1930s. We had a lot of fun at this high school. I was teaching Madison a lesson the old-fashioned way. I would like to thank you for watching. This was a fun day just exploring this little hidden treasure in Colorado. I love these little small towns and learning about their history.